So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to upload your manuscript from Word into Kindle KDP and uh, you know to form the ebooks or even the print versions. But I am going to be working with just Word, right? And I'm talking about just the Windows because I've never used the Apple software or anything like that. So it's just for if you've been writing on Word, you've got your manuscript and you want to know how to use Kindle Create, you want to format your book. So what I did, I've, I've published two books so far uh, on Amazon. I've got Lavender and Brown, The Oak Mysteries, and I've got a chess book, Ch Improve Your Chess Visualization. So I've gone through the process. I know what it's like. And I did find it quite frustrating when, when I come to actually do this because, you know, obviously I read around, read all the information, I watched videos on it, and some of the things were inaccurate and caused me, you know, a bit of bit of time to, like, readjust things. So it's going to be a no-nonsense guide. I'm going to tell you how exactly I did it. And, you know, if I can do it, anybody can. So let's have a look. <laughs> So this video is assuming that you've obviously written your manuscript, you've polished it, it's all checked, it's ready to go, you know, it's been edited and proofed and things like that. So that's that's what where your manuscript should be, obviously. And I'm um, assuming that you've downloaded the Kindle Create or you're thinking of doing so. So once you get to that process, uh, first thing you need to do is prepare your manuscript for uploading into Kindle Create. So the thing you need to do is, I've got mine here, and all you're looking at doing is just getting the, the actual content of the manuscript. So all the front pages, like the title pages, the dedication pages, uh, the contents, and then, you know, the acknowledgements at the end, they're all going to come separate. So you use Kindle Create to add those individually. So all you actually need is the main body of your story, you know, your text, whether it's a fiction or non-fiction, whatever. And what you need to do is prepare the manuscript, but you can see there's absolutely nothing here. There's no type page I've removed it all I've opened a separate file I've called it Amazon and I've just created this as a blank uh, file just with my main body of my manuscript in it and what you need to do is go to paragraph and you want to choose the following settings you want to do special first line half a centimeter single space and then apply it to your document once you've done that you can save it and it's ready to, to upload into the next step Okay, so the next thing to do is to upload your manuscript to Kindle Create. So obviously, I'm assuming that you've you've downloaded the Kindle Create uh, software. I'll put the link in the description, but you can find it, you know, just yourself anyway. Uh, so what I would do is first, I'd, I'd sort of play around with it a little bit, just to get used to the formatting and things. And there's an idea to, you know, upload another blank document. You know, you could do like a, an example text so you can play around with it. I think the Kindle Create software comes with like Jane Austen. Um, work that you can play around with and you can play with the format. So that's definitely worth it. But it's fairly basic. You know, I, I sort of got to grips with it within half an hour or so. And so what you're looking for is when you upload it, and I have actually added the front matter already in this in this uh, book, but you get front matter, the main bodies, the chapters, and then you get the back, back matter in the pages after. But you, if you just upload in your document, you won't have got these in yet. But all you need to do to add these is just go to the little tick a little cross at the side and then and choose that. But I'll talk about that later. I'll just show you the general uh, layout of the, the the software. So what you've got up here is fairly simple. Say, you know, file, edit, view, help sort of section, you know, and that's where you're going to save your project. Is, and it keeps popping up, you know, have you just seen there every, every five minutes or so to, to save it. On this side, you've got the print settings. This is where you can choose uh, your page numbers. If you're doing a print version, I just personally prefer this one because, you know, there's no title at the top. I think it could get really annoying if, you know, the title's constantly at the top of each page. So I just choose that one. But that's just for the print version. The ebook version doesn't include page numbers, but you can select that for both of them. And the Kindle ebook version will not include page Page numbers okay so that's that one and then you've got themes you've got a fairly different uh, you know simple sets of how you want to lay it out uh, there you can choose which one's suitable to you and I just went with the default one to be honest with you the modern one and you can select which one you want and then uh, you've got elements and formatting and this is where you're going to format the different parts of the text so the first thing you need to do is format your chapters so highlight chapter one and then go to formatting, your elements, sorry, and, and click chapter title, and it brings it up uh, to the correct uh, size and position. And then the same with the subtitle. You know, I'm going to be using my second book as just an example to, sh to show you through here. My second book in the, the Lavender and Brown series, anyway. Uh, so once we've got the title and subtitles, yeah, and that, and then you're going to do that for every single one. So you're going to go through every single one. You know, chapter title. If it's got a subtitle, subtitle, every single chapter, all the way down. A little bit tedious, but you know it's you know it's fairly easy once you get into the system. And then what you're going to do with this first paragraph, uh, if you want to, is highlight the first paragraph and 
go to it's already on first paragraph it's already sort of spaced it out for me and you want to go to apply drop cap and then you get this set up this familiar system and then you do that for every one so let's look at chapter two you know every single one i've got no other subtitles so it's just chapter headings and you know a first paragraph is drop cap like that now word of warning if you have got any formatting in that first paragraph when you've done that what i found it out uh, found out is that um, it gets rid of some of the formatting so I, for example i had some italics in in one of the chapters and it totally deletes that so if you have got an, an italics or maybe the bolding or anything like that then you need to go and add that back uh, I've got an example. Let's say, for example, uh, devastating news was in italics. You wanted it in italics. By doing the first pass pa paragraph drop cap like that, you've just got rid of it. So you need to edit edit that back in by just clicking on that and doing that. And as you see, it, it brings it into it. So get rid of that. So basically, that's the first stage that you need to do. Do that all the way through. Uh, and then you've got a sort of the main body is almost done in, 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 in a sense, really, for that bit. Another thing you can do is if you're using the little chapter breaks, and I'll show you where I mean, you can make this look uh, more professional. Here we are. Look, so when you've got these three stars as chapter breaks, you can highlight them and go to the relevant area elements. Click on separators and then it brings it up you know, in this traditional sort of Kindle sort of setup. And then you have to do that all the way through. So again, this is a little bit tedious. Let's go to the next one. There's one up there, look. And obviously you're going to make sure you find them all. And it just adds the separators and it just looks more professional. And then you've got, basically, you've got the main bit that you need there. You've got all of the uh, content of your actual book. Okay, so let's look at front matter and back matter. So what you need to do for that is, depending on what front matter you want, you add that separately. So as you can see, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got a title page. I've got a copyright page, a standard copyright page. Uh, and I've got uh, dedication for those who hate parties. <laughs> My characters don't like parties. Uh, and I've got uh, an epigraph. Uh, and then we go into contents page. Now, this is where... Uh, you need to make sure that if it's a print copy, you don't select contents page. So right, in a print copy book, I don't want this. I don't want this like in a print copy, but in the ebook I do because people might want a hyperlink to the next chapter or to, to flick around a little bit. So this is where I'd have one sort of default uh, book in Kindle Create, it's a default file, and I'd save two separate files. So I'd have an ebook version and a print copy. Right, it doesn't matter about the page numbers, like I said earlier, the page numbers are fine because the Kindle won't recognize that, but it will print this chapter which looks a bit ugly in a print book from my point of view you might want that that's fine but I, I certainly didn't so you do that with each of the uh, front matters really easy to add let's just add uh, you know just go go to the little plus add title page and then you just fill that in uh, you click OK and then you get the title page and that's not including the front cover the front cover is separate that's gonna be uploaded separate okay so you do that with the front matter the bank matter as well I've got quite a lengthy author's notes and decided not to drop cap that, you know, like in the chapter, I just like, like this bit. I decided just to have that as so sort of blank. And I've got uh, about me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then that's basically done. That's basically ready. And uh, with hyperlinks as well, it's easy to add hyperlinks, right? You can just, you highlight a line, right click into hyperlink. You know, it's very, very simple. But obviously, again, uh, the hyperlink's not going to really work. Yeah, I'm going to change that. I'm going to actually add this hyperlink here, look. I'm going to copy that, uh, remove hyperlink. Well, I'll do that in a bit. What I need to do is copy that. When it says C here, I'm going to actually add that in that word by just adding the hyperlink here. So I'm going to come back to that in a little bit and do that. Uh, I thought I could just cut and paste it, but I'm going to have to go and take that here. So yeah, so that's what you want to do with hyperlinks. Hyperlinks obviously for the ebook, but you don't want that in your print book. So what you can do is you have to have, this is why you have to have two different files. So where you have got an hyperlink for your ebook, you might just uh, give them a website address or something like that to look at. Okay, so any other little bits, let's have a think. Right, so what you do need to do is keep saving the file, keep working on it, so you don't have to go through this tedious process again, right? And then once you've got that, uh, I had the contents pages, everything's added there. You want to file save it to a particular place, you know, save project as, put it in a file. And then once you're all happy with absolutely everything, what I would do is then preview it. And then in the preview pane, what you can do is you can look what it looks like on tablet. You know, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks uh, really good. And you can also then click over to what it looks like on the Kindle e-reader device. 
it shouldn't be much different, but in some of the things it can sort of be different. So you want to make sure it works on both settings. You know, there we go. And uh, what does it look like on the actual phone so that it can be read on the phone? Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And once you're happy with that, you're ready to go on to the next bit. So once you're happy with everything, what you then want to do is export the file, click on export, and you'll save it as a separate file, which will then be uploaded to KDP. Something I forgot to mention was uh, inserting images is quite easy. Uh, you just simply right click, and I know you can't see what comes up here. It just says split chapter here or insert image. And you just click on insert image and insert image. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, it, it will alter, you know, when you've got to check them. If you do have images, uh, like my, my, my visualized book had lots of images in it. It's very image heavy. And, you know, I had to really play around with the settings so that it, it worked well on all formats. So that it, what worked, looked well on the you know, e reader device didn't look good on the phone. So I had to sort of change around the sizes and things like that. So they were all on the correct pages. So if your, your book is uh, image heavy, you might have to do a bit more of the previewing stuff. And then you've got your actual file that you can upload load to uh, KDP and uh, what you're going to need then obviously is a front cover and that's you know that's, uh, for another time uh, but when you, once you've got the actual file to upload your manuscript to upload you, you're good to go now what you can do is what I would recommend is before publishing it is just keep it for a week or two because any alterations it's much easier to make before you publish you can still make alterations when you publish but it can take sort of four out four or five hours for it to go live so if you if you do find some mistakes it can be annoying if you know you've got mistakes out there but you know four or five hours is still not bad but if you are uploading the file and editing it before you publish it tends to do that very very quickly so within 10 minutes or so uh, well in my experience that that's been the case anyway so i would sort of hold back a little bit I read through it again, you know, again, 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 uh, and then finding anything else is just easier to sort of do it that way, especially with the print books. So I would recommend really doing the the ebooks first, and then what I did with my book is I released the ebook first, and then I did the print copy sort of two weeks later. So any little last minute inaccuracies I could sort of iron out. Okay, so I hope you found this uh, useful. And if you've got any questions, then just pop them in the uh, the chat, and uh, you know I'll do my best to answer them if I can do. Thank you.